in the final. She's up against the Japanese player, Minatsu Mitani. So three courts in action here in Odense. Well, the destination Dubai rankings as far as the women's singles is concerned. Well, the number one and two changed places because Carolina Marin didn't play in the Korean Super Series, and nor did Sina Nawal. And both of them suffered. In fact, Sina Nawal went down two places. But of course, the winner from Korea, the home player, Sung Ji Hyung, came into the top 10, up from 13, up three places to number 10 on the Super Series uh, standings. And of course, Wang Yi Han, the beaten finalist, in Seoul, the last of the Super Series events, uh, up two places from number five. So there was a, a little bit of movement in the women's singles destination Dubai rankings. Interesting that Wang Shexian, number one, but she hasn't won a Super Series title this year. Well, as we can see, Sung Ji Hyung, who won the Korean Super Series, has already booked her place in the quarterfinal, the number seven seed. But who will she play? Will it be Sina Nawal, the number one seed, or Minatsu Mitani of Japan? Well, incredibly. And now on court number one. This will be the third time that these two players have met at the Denmark Open. And on the previous two occasions that they've met here in Denmark, it's this lady who's won, Sina Nawal. Seventh appearance here at the Denmark Open. She's only 25 years of age. Current world number one, first ever player, female player from India to win an Olympic medal, a bronze medal in London. First female player to be in the final of the All England Championships and the World Championships. And there she is. She is a megastar in her home country. Inspired not only a lot of girls to take up the sport of badminton encouraged uh, a lot of female participation in sport in general. But I keep reading how all the cricketers are enjoying a, a game of badminton now when they're not involved in test matches. Even the male cricketers are loving the sport of badminton. And rightly so. So there is the 24-year-old Minatsu Mitani. Number 18 on the world ranking at the moment. Has been a top 10 player. Highest of nine, spent 17 weeks in total at number nine in the world. But Sina Nawal is enjoying her 14th week in total as world number one. Four finals this year from nine tournaments played. Won the India Grand Prix Gold and the India Super Series. And of course, the two finals was the All England and the World Championships. Well, she had a real battle in the first round against Busanan Ngbangarangpan of Thailand. Saved three game points in that opening game before taking it 23-21. Dropped the second game. Hour and nine minutes that lasted before she won through 21-18 in the deciding game. So the 24-year-old, she's the fourth-ranked Japanese player now at number 18 in the world. And symmetry in her win-loss record for the year. 14 tournaments played, her best so far, a semi-final at the Canadian Grand Prix. Now, she also had a Thailand player in the very first round, Pontip Borana Prasetsuk. 21-10, 25 minutes. And when you think that Pontip has been a Super Series tournament winner, uh, before, in fact, the first player from Thailand to win a women's singles title at Super Series level. Well, this will be the ninth meeting uh, between these two players. Only twice has it gone to three games. The last time they met was in the second round of the Japan Super Series. 
And two straight games, as you can see. That was just last month. But, of course, Mitani had the home support there. But here at the Denmark Open, on the head-to-heads, it's two love for Sine and Awol. Will it be third time lucky for Minatsu Nitani? Alan Potter of England and Wolfgang Lund from France, our court officials for this one. Huge strapping on the knee of Minatsu Mitani. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Minatsu Mitani, Japan. India. So the world number one and former champion here, Sina Nawal getting this second round encounter underway. One love. <laughs> yeah, that's a good smash from Mitani. And of course, Mitani is herself a Super Series winner. Won the 2012 French Open. And who did she beat in the final? Sina. Sina Newa. Yeah, we haven't heard a lot about her here in the last year since she won the bronze in um, the World Championships in Denmark. It's mainly been Okuhara and Yamaguchi. Who are both in the top ten in the world at yeah. the moment. And what a great training environment they must have in, in Japan with all these magnificent ladies' singles. Yeah. <laughs> Both for a very interesting Uber Cup coming up here in 2016 in the spring. Well, of course, Japan are holders of the Thomas Cup, aren't they? Yeah. Men's team competition. Oh, look at that backhand from Sina Nawa. Sina actually has exactly the same two opponents in the first two rounds here in Denmark as she had in, in Japan. She also beat Ong Bong Bumpan in, in the first round there before losing to Mitani. Interesting to see if the playing conditions will affect the outcome in any way of this match. Japan is a very, very big venue and by most of the players, um, they, they feel that, uh, that it's a bit slow hole. This is definitely not a slow hold. This is no. rewarding attacking uh, play here in, in Odinson. That's one thing, at least, I'm looking forward to seeing this match. The other thing is, what, what kind of shape is, is Sina in? She, she lost the World Championship final. It was a great achievement to, to go into the final, but has she taken a little bit uh, of a holiday after the Worlds? It would be natural, but probably it would be even wise to do it because the Olympics coming up here in 2016, and we know that there's not going to be any possibilities of, of taking a break until after the Olympics. So I suspect that a number of um, the medal contenders 
or the presumed medal contenders, they will be having a, a little holiday. They've had a little holiday, I think, after the World Championships, so interesting to see what kind of shape she's in. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was clearly out. I don't think there was any influence from Sina Nawal, was there? No, absolutely not. So what is... I'm we're not we're quite waiting for a challenge, I think. Well, it should be up on the scoreboard that there's yeah. a challenge. Oh, well, I was confused by that. I think you're right, there is a challenge. And it was out. It was a good call by the line judge. So it was an official's review, umpire's review. There were no challenges lost. Ah! Well, well, well. I didn't realise the umpire was allowed to challenge the a line judge's decision. Yeah. Uh, obviously, as we saw from the last match, if the line judge is unsighted, yeah. I thought the umpire could only overrule yeah. a decision. It should be up to Mitani to challenge exactly. when, when there's a decision made. No wonder I didn't understand what was going on. Are you clear on the rule there? Have I got it wrong? Is is he allowed to to challenge a line judge? I don't think so. If the line judge he can he can overrule, I think. The, yeah. The, the the rules are <laughs> the ruling yeah. regarding this Hawkeye is a little bit unclear because um, the odd part is that that they they want to make it fair for for all four courts. So I think actually that the umpire can overrule still without um, you, uh, <laughs> consulting Hawkeye, so to yeah. speak. But if he overrules, then the player can challenge. Yes. And we've seen that happen. Mm. I can't remember when, but I, I can remember we've seen it. And, yes. and it must be a strange feeling for yeah. the umpire. Yeah. And that's certainly the system in tennis, isn't it? The umpire uh, can overrule a call, and then uh, the player can challenge mm. that overall. And that's good attacking play. Yeah, she was off balance, Mitani. She played that. Yeah, that was a high clear. Yeah. It got all the way out of the TV picture. Mm. <laughs> And I didn't think it was particularly deep either. No. <laughs> but, Steen, coming back to the point that you made earlier, that this is an attacking hall, yeah. you know, and obviously in a slower hall, you were saying that in Tokyo that favoured Mitani. Are you saying that it should suit Sina Nawal better, the fact that it's an attacking hall? Yeah, or I not think, necessarily? I think so, because I think that she's able to change the style of play a little bit more, but... But my, um, my initial thought is that she'd been having a, a vacation after the Worlds. Yeah. Uh, because she's normally not that affected by which kind of hall she plays in China. Mm. She's good in, in most halls. She's won in Indonesia. Um, she's been in the final of, um, of the World Championships there. And, and, and um, uh, I, I, I can't really recall whether uh, she's won in, in, in the bigger halls, but... Um, yep, she won in Singapore, she's yeah, won in Hong Kong. Which is very windy. Yep. Hong Kong is also a big hall right now, yeah. so, so she can sort of play in all kinds of conditions. So I would expect that it's a little bit um, of um, more uh, physical training, more strength training going on at the moment after perhaps a week off or something like that. Yeah, you can see the huge strapping, aren't you, on the leg of Mitani there. All yeah. oh, that short. And when, when we say slow haul compared to, to a more fast and attacking friendly haul, it's, it's about, uh, it's got to do with the, the size of the arena and, and the distance to, uh, to the spectators. Uh, 
the bigger the hole, the bigger the distance to, to the spectators, the harder it is to get your timing right. Mm. And it feels like you hit your shots a little bit off uh, the sweet spot of the racket. I didn't think perhaps fully committed when she came forward in that rally. Yeah, yeah. Sign and Awal. I thought it was an opportunity to pressurise from the front of the court, but she chose to lift it. Also, we've been talking about this Olympic qualification period that it's very, very important. And of course it is for, for some players, it's just not important in the same way for all players. Some mm. are trying desperately to qualify, whereas Sina here, she knows she's going to play the Olympics. So it's more about playing well at the Olympics and, and yes. having as, as good an opportunity as possible to to win a medal or per, uh, perhaps even a gold medal for her country. Yeah. And, and that's about getting ranking points, getting enough ranking points so that you um, put yourself in a, in, a, in a good position to do well at the Olympics. And that's why I, I, I suspect that the better players, the stronger players here, they have perhaps taken a little bit of a break after the Worlds. Yeah. Well, it is Mitani who has the advantage with that neck cord at the mid-game interval. <laughs> で、その処理手法、すぐ回速しなくていいよ。長くなっていいから全然。で、その後向こう、ペイントドロップか低いロビングくるじゃん。だからそんな慌てないで。慌てるだけでいいじゃん。ちょっと無、奥難しかったら
it goes straight towards the uh, top of the tape. There's not much mark in there, so it has to be exactly the right speed. Oh, my goodness me. Well, I think there's a sideways drift more than a lengthways drift. I thought the same as Sina. When that was first hit that clear, I thought it was going to go well wide, but it came back in. How short it was. Sean, and that, that sort of... That's short too, isn't it? Gives us a hint that we might be right about the uh, drift lengthwise as well. Yeah, yeah. Because that's very common that if you're afraid of playing too long, you end up playing too short. We'd just be expecting Sina to attack a little bit more on those... Short clears to the back court. Ah, that's nice. Yeah. yeah, that's what we expect her to do more of. 13, 16. Just wide. Well, I was just reading a, one of the Indian newspapers recently, and Vimal Kumar, her personal coach, was talking about Saina is so much tougher mentally than so many of her opponents. Yeah, exactly. And I thought that yesterday against Busanan really showed her yeah. toughness. Yeah, I thought about that when um, Mitani was leading 13 10, uh, where she, in my opinion, was kind of dominating the game. But mm. if there's one thing we've learned is never to ride off um, Sina in any game. No. And we can see Limar Kumar from where we're sitting, and he looks still calm. Yeah. Cheering on sign up. Another challenge. And this time from Mitani. Yeah, that's a good challenge. Th that's a very good challenge. That is definitely out. And a very important one. Yeah. Well, we shouldn't say that's definitely out. We better wait for Orca. Yeah. <laughs> no, we, I've been caught out with that before. Uh, we must. We must stick our necks out. <laughs> yeah. Out it was. And except when we are prone wrong. Yep, we don't mind. I have my glasses in my back. <laughs> <laughs> so two points away from this opening game. Minatsu Mitani. As you say, Steen, that was a very important challenge. Well played. Oh, that's lovely. Very nice little deception. Sends Mitani in the wrong direction towards the back court. Yeah, there's the aggression. There's the fighting spirit. And all of a sudden, the four point deficit is halved. It's just two points in it now.
on White. And now three game point opportunities for Mitani. She saved three game points in the opening game. In the first round yesterday, did sign an AWOP. Still won that opening game. Yeah. Oh. oh, that is magnificent. What a shot. Played with disguise, played with precision. 21 18. Confirms the umpire opening game to Minatsu Mitani in 20 minutes of play. Look at that. Beautiful. Yeah, no backswing, hardly any follow through. Yeah. It takes a lot of practice because uh, there's not a lot of room for. Um, a little bit uh, mistiming of the shot. If there's a little mistiming, it will be a big, big mistake. Mm. Seems we want to get the Japanese coaches' advices here. The Malcomar has chosen not to have a microphone during the intervals. Shuji Sato, former Japanese number one men's singles player. My goodness, he was fast. He was fast. He was really fast. Yeah. Three consecutive All England quarterfinals in the men's singles. Sato. And quite quite a capable men's doubles player after that. Yeah, was at the London Olympics. After the Olympics. Yeah, he retired mm. after the London Olympics yeah. where he qualified in the men's doubles. With Naoki Kawamai. Yeah, I couldn't remember what his partner's <laughs> name was, but uh, <laughs> if anyone could, that would be you, Joe. <laughs> Yeah, that's strapping on the ankle is seems to be ever present. Yeah, and it needs to be because um, it's the only thing that sort of if, if you uh, twist your ankle and, and you can do all kinds of, uh, of rehab for it. But the only thing that's working is tape it every time you play. Yeah. And there's different kinds of tape and, 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 and you need to have the strong kind in order to to hold it and mm. it was the case for Tina Baum as well. She had both her ankles strapped. Um. And Tina Baum, of course, the last Danish winner of the women's singles here. 2009. Game. Was she still Tina Rasmussen then or Tina Bauna? I think she was still Tina Rasmussen then. Yeah, I think so. So, second game, Minatsu Mitani, 21-18, third opening game against the world number one. Well, there was real intent in that opening rally. Look at that, take it early, come from above the shuttle when you're playing back to the net and then getting behind the lift to play the winning smash. Real short lift there from uh, sign up. Oh, 
Ooh, that was going wide, wasn't it? What a good oh. rally. Oh, oh, my goodness. What a deception. It's not often you see Sine and Awol oh. left stranded. Her body is going the total opposite way. That is amazing. She thought that was a cross clear. Of course, that's so important to have complementary shots. So that the one you're actually making, you can make it look like a genuine shot going in the opposite direction. Yeah, that's nice disguise too, isn't it? OK, well, we couldn't hear Vimal Kumar no. at the interval in between the first and second game. What would you be advising? What would you have said to Sina Nawal? Well, it depends whether I've, I've sort of judged it correctly that she's in some kind of um, uh, hard training period with lots of um, cardio training, lots of weight training. If, if that's the case, then I would just... Um, tell her to play on a few tactical advices perhaps uh, she needed to attack a little bit more but maybe she's not uh, really uh, in, in shape to uh, to uh, sort of execute the tactics uh, maybe she hasn't played enough badminton during practice um, if, if that's the case that she's been doing a lot of um, uh, ground training no, it's just wide and, uh, if that's, if, not, that, if that's not the case, yeah, then if what? If that's not the case, then, then uh, she needs to attack a bit more, uh, especially because we suspect her to be on the side that's a little bit um, faster and, and plays with the wind, so, so don't play the baseline too much. Um, it's, it's really hard to, to wear down these Japanese girls. They're in extremely uh, good uh, physical shape, so you need to take the initiative and... Um, and play sharp and precise at yourself. But it's hard for so she's she's playing well with Tani and, and she's developed uh, some of those uh, deceptions here. I haven't seen her use them before. Mm. And it's really um, made her game significantly better because it's hard for Sina to, to get um, control of the rallies. Do you, I mean, that last rally, I was very conscious that Sina Nawal was pumping the forehand corner, deep yeah. forehand corner yeah. of Mitani. Do you think she's trying to overdo that? Uh, or was that just no, one-off rally, uh, do you think? Not, not really. I think often players uh, <laughs> underdo it when, when they're told that they should um, target a specific area. Um, I, I like to see it exaggerated, but of course, in some ways, you have to sort of hide your intent. So every once in a while, you need to play a rally in another way than the one you, you actually think is going to work uh, tactical-wise. Oh, yes, well taken yeah. and well worked. And, and it's the cross lift there from Sina who is the problem. She actually had a few good lifts to the forehand, but uh, Mitani is so fast coming round the head in her backhand side. It's gone wide. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I mean, we've seen a couple of disguise shots overhead from Mitani yeah. that have been simply yeah. wonderful. But I think the big difference is the, the disguise she's getting from the front of the court, the hold, yeah. and then the flat, fast push yeah. to the deep corners. And, and we can see that it sort of uh, <laughs> takes to sign as she, uh, she trips a little bit. And normally she's very good at, at sort of tripping a little bit and then going for it. Mm. But, but she's been a little bit slower in that phase of the game um, today. Then again, still six all in, in the second game. Seven, six now, so she's still in it. Yeah. 
Mm. Well, I was just about to say you don't often see disappointment from no, Simon no, Awell, but no. within a second she was saying, come on. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. that that getting down on herself doesn't last for long, does it? Good defence. Yeah. Got out of jail there. Matano very much dictating the pace of the rally. It couldn't convert. See, uh, I become more and more confident of, of the read that, that she's been on um, a small vacation and is, is doing her homework now as to weight training and cardio training. I think she she didn't play the Korea Open. I think she went to Japan because uh, of the uh, equipment sponsor. And um, she has to play here. Is she, is she playing in, in Paris? Do we know that? Let me check. That's a beautiful shot from Mitani. But like Lee Chong Wei in the first of our matches, just slightly slow to react on the defence. Yeah. Sign and A will. Ah, that's good attacking play. Yeah, she's entered into the French Open. She's top seed. Mister. Well, there was just one point in it at the mid-game interval of that opening game. Three points in it here in the second. チャンスあったら、ね、深かったらカットでいいよ。ちょっと分かんないのカットドロップで強いクリアで相手が低いロビングの時にあえば打てばいいから。それ以外は抑える。バックちょっと今抑えるだけでいい。全然。ね、ここ
Excellent. Oh. Excellent play. What a fantastic shot to win it there. Straight slice. Look at that defence there and the control on that shot. Seem to be taking those so late. Landed in, that's a misjudgment from Sina Newell. And the problem for Sina is that she's actually uh, that's a that's a big mistake. The problem for Sina is that she's she's in, in the beginning of the rally she, she she's controlling them, but she can't win them and she can't even keep up the control. Eventually the control goes over to Mitani. Except from that one. Yeah. <laughs> Facing the runners-up at this year's World Championships. Please welcome from Denmark, Christina Pilsen and Camilla oh, Great smash. The outcome is now Steven. And the second jet is now Susan Lopez. Oh, that's just brilliant again. Yeah. And it, it's the defence. The I mean, defence is really, really strong. Fantastic. Yeah. And she's got this wonderful touch, the block and guiding the shuttle. Yeah. Yeah, and I wonder if that should be something that Sina does more of. There was no pace on that shot yeah. for yeah. Mitani to feed off. Exactly. Missed it. Yeah, her retrieving is absolutely fantastic, Nitani. And I think that last one is a sign that Sina Newell is getting a little bit frustrated by it. Yeah, she feels that if I'm going to win rallies, they need to be really close to the lines. And so you could say that what looks like a, an unforced error is actually provoked by the strong uh, defensive game by uh, Mitani. Yeah. Oh, that was so, so short. That attempted cross-court clear from Sina Newell. Was it a mishit? Look where yeah. Matani's feet are. Yeah. Must have been a miss hit. No, oh, no, that's beautiful. Oh, we haven't seen many of those this match, have we? Yeah. It's gone wide. Time is running out for the world number one. Look at oh, that net shot. Great net play. Racket arm outstretched, taking the shuttle early. Look at this. Yeah. Look at the spin and the tumble on that. Very positive performance from Mitani. Game point opportunities. And that's gone long. And it is indeed third time lucky here at the Denmark Open for Minatsu Mitani. Her two previous outings here. When she reached the last 16, both occasions she lost to her opponent of today. This time, she gets revenge. 
21 13. 39 minutes of play. Yep. I think she was deceived by that punch clear, but went long anyway. Understated celebrations. Through to the quarterfinal for the first time here at the Denmark Open. Uh, Minatsu Mitani. So two of our matches concluded and two big upsets. Former world number one, Lee Chong Wei going down to Wei Nan and current world number one in the women's singles, Saina Nawal losing to Min Minatsu Mitani, second consecutive loss to the Japanese player. Next up, we've got Victor Axelson, the number six seed against last year's beaten finalist Song Wan Ho of Korea. And then we turn our attention to men's doubles, first of all, and the reigning world champions. Two-time world champions, Mohamed Hassan and Hendra Setiawan, take on the qualifiers, Elim and Lu. Then mixed doubles and the three-time former champions, Fisher, Nielsen and Peterson. Of course, they are the reigning European champions. They take on more qualifiers, Kazuno and Kurihara from Japan. So still plenty more.